Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm back with yet another all-in-one breakfast station. This is the fourth breakfast station I've done over the years. I've got some requests for it, so let's see how it works in today's video. So this is the fourth breakfast station I've done over the years, so I guess I have kind of an affinity for them. I did two of them last year. The first one I did was several years ago, actually by the same brand, Nostalgia. That one had a coffee maker, a griddle, and a toaster oven. I did two of them in 2023. One had a toaster and a griddle. The other one had a grill and a hot plate. So today's model has a toaster on one side and a multifunction hot plate on the other. First of all, I paid 50 bucks for this. It's got a 4.3 star rating over a thousand reviews. They say it's the ultimate breakfast station. You can make an entire breakfast, bacon and eggs on this side, toast on this one. Also good for breakfast sandwiches. It includes a two slice wide toaster for toaster bagels with settings from one to six right here. This side has kind of a generic hot plate that can be used with this griddle or this basket, which can be used for veggies or eggs. This basket can actually make six hard boiled eggs at once. Uh, the nonstick griddle here they say is easy to clean can be used for pancakes, eggs, burgers, and more. Has cool touch handles. And the steaming basket also includes a measuring cup and egg piercer right there. It also includes an egg ring for making things like pancakes or breakfast sandwiches. They say it's ideal for RVs, campers, dorms, or small kitchens. Take a look at the control panel. We have the cancel button here. The toast browning level from one to six, which is a bit oddly satisfying to use. We have the toasting lever here, bagel button, defrost button, heat on and off, and a kind of retro looking timer here, which is kind of cool. And it also has LED lights in there as well. And the timer goes up to 15 minutes. So I've made a lot of breakfast sandwiches in this channel over the years. So let's start with that because that's kind of my baseline. But following the instructions here, here we go. First test. For frying, which I'm gonna have to use the, the griddle here on, on the hot plate, they say to wipe everything down first, which I've done. And they say to add a tiny bit of oil in here as well, just to keep the surface from getting too sticky, even though it's supposed to be a nonstick surface. Just put a little uh, a small layer of oil on a paper towel like they suggest. All right, so next thing I gotta do is plug it in and preheat it for three minutes and then we can get started. Plugging in the breakfast maker. I'll set their timer here for three minutes and see if it actually works. All right, it's all preheated. I think we're ready to go. Take a look at the thermal imager here. It's pretty warm. This looks like the, the center part is quite hot there. It's like the, the hottest part's around 350, so it's, it's definitely pretty warm. I'm also noticing there really is no heat adjustment, so hopefully the, it's not too hot for eggs. Eggs don't really do so well in high heat, but we shall see. Here we go. I'm right, placing the ring onto the griddle. Cracking an egg into the egg ring. I think they say to use the bagel setting, so let's uh, push this down. I'll, I'll set it just to three right in the center and I'll hit the bagel button. Let's throw a slice of a Canadian bacon on here to warm that up as well. Now I've got several friends from Canada and they're all very mellow people, but one thing that seems to trigger them is the phrase Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon. So to my Canadian friends out there, I gotta say, don't kill the messenger, it's not my name for it. <laughs> all right, my English muffins are done. Not very brown on the three setting, but I'll, I'll just, I'll go with it anyways. I'll do a more uh, elaborate toast test later on. And it looks like the timer isn't really working. I set it to three minutes as this is not even moving. It hasn't moved at all. So I don't know what's going on with that. I originally set the timer for three minutes. Uh, even though the dial didn't move, it did turn off after three minutes. I thought because the dial hadn't moved, it was still, it was still on. It wasn't. So I gotta make sure this blue light's on at all times. So I'm a, little, I'm a little behind schedule on my egg and my Canadian bacon. My English muffin is done. But we're rolling now that I got sizzle going on here. So let's see how the sandwich turns out in a couple minutes. I wish there was a heat setting, but there isn't. It's just on or off. So hopefully it's not too warm for this egg here. So that timer is gonna be an issue. I have to just set it all the way to max and just turn it on and off manually because when the timer goes off, even though the dial doesn't move, it turns the griddle off. All right, issue number two already is that I'm hearing the griddle kind of cycling on and off even though the button is remaining blue. And that's slowing the process way down. I know they probably do it to even the heat out, but man, it's, it'd be nice if you can just set it on low and have it cook the entire time rather than cycling on and off. Because this is gonna take forever. My English muffin's probably getting cold already. Canadian bacon looks like it's already pretty much done but the egg is still not cooked yet. It's almost there. It's getting there, but it's not there yet. Now, if I was doing this on a pan the old school way, I'd probably be halfway done with my sandwich already. All right, I'm gonna try removing this egg ring. All right, egg ring removed. Egg is intact. I think I, could, I might be able to flip it. I'm gonna try it. Oh, I think we got a flip going on there. All right, I, I couldn't wait any longer. I'm getting impatient. I'm, I'm getting hungry. All right, let's let this egg out of here. I, I, I can't take it anymore. Just gonna put it on this side of the English muffin. I mean, it came out good. That's one side, 
And that's the other side. I think it was pretty good. Canadian bacon's probably almost getting dried out by now. Let's see what we got here. And then this is just the timer never moved. I don't even know where it's at. Just got to turn it off. So here's my breakfast sandwich. We've got the English muffin, which that was three. So it's, it's kind of toasted. Canadian bacon looks nice. The egg looks pretty good and the cheese on the bottom. So that took about twice as long as it probably would have in the Hamilton beach maker or even just the old school way with a toaster and a frying pan. But now that it's done, let's try it out. So the sandwich turned out pretty good, but I already have some issues. The timer is kind of janky. It doesn't really work that well. The griddle is kind of slow and the toaster on three didn't seem very toasted. So I've got some more tests to do before I can get my final result, but I'm gonna finish my sandwich and then move on to the next test. All right, one of the main features of this breakfast station is it can supposedly hard boil six eggs at a time. So let's try that now. So after cleaning this off, what we're supposed to do, place the steaming tray on the heating tray, pour water from the measuring cup into the steaming tray. I've got it filled up to the hard level right there. Place the egg tray on the steaming tray. Now we're supposed to pierce the large end of each egg and put the pierced side up. All right, this is what we've got. All six of them in there with the pierced side facing up. Now we're supposed to cover with the lid, just like this. For hard boiled eggs, they say it's 14 minutes. Now you're supposed to set the timer to 14 here. I'm gonna set it to 14 and hit the button and we're good to go. Now I found something interesting in the directions. It says the timer dial is not gonna move. That's actually not a flaw. It's part of the actual product, which is strange. Why would they do that? I'm gonna use another stopwatch here just in case, because I don't really trust theirs. So while I'm waiting for the six eggs to go for 14 minutes, I'm gonna try out the toaster and try all the browning levels and see how they actually compare. All right, first slice of bread, browning level one. All right, so that went about one minute for brownie level one and it's not very brown, but we're gonna keep trying and see how they all compare. Number two just finished, that was about a minute and 15 seconds. A little bit browner and not completely even, one side's browner than the other, but let's keep going. Number three. Here we go, oh wow. Big difference to number three. Look at this. Not even and much darker than the others. All right, I'm gonna keep going, but I'm kind of afraid of what four through six is gonna look like if that's number three. Here we go, number four. And we should be about eight and a half minutes into our eggs while we're waiting for that. There are steam vents in the top, I should have mentioned, when they are doing their job. I'm a little bit nervous about number four here. I feel like it should have popped up already, but it hasn't. It should be interesting. All right, here we go, number four. Oh. <laughs> There's, I'm not doing five and six, no way. Look at this. I'm not going, I'm not doing five and six. I'm calling it right there. There's, there's no point. It's already pitch black. There's no way I'm gonna do five or six. My stopwatch shows 14 minutes and their light's still on. So their timer's a little bit off. Let's turn it off anyways. Move this over a little bit. Now we're supposed to put it in some ice water for the next 10 minutes. That was hot. That was hot. It almost sounds like they're sizzling. Move them into the bath of ice water. All right, so the final unit, I'm gonna let cool off for a while. I'm gonna clean it off for the next round. I'm gonna let the eggs sit for about 10 minutes, peel them and see how they turned out. But let's look and see how the toast did while we're waiting for the eggs. This is the toast level one, side one, side two. Toast level two, side one, side two. Toast level three, side one, side two. Definitely a difference. And toast level four, which this side looks like three, this side looks like a mess. Not even, and level four is about as high as anybody would possibly wanna go. So the toaster is serviceable, but you know, it's a little bit uneven and there's no point in using levels five or six, but it works, it's just not perfect. We are at 10 minutes. Let's see how these eggs turned out. Here we go, fresh out of their ice bath. Well, it peels nicely, that's a good thing. There's always that moment when, you're, when you realize it's gonna be easier, difficult to peel. Fortunately, this is one of the easy ones. Let's cut this open and see what we've got here. It looks fine to me. Let's give it a taste and see how it turned out. All right, so it worked. I have a perfectly cooked hard boiled egg, so it's good for that. Six at a time is pretty good. I'm gonna clean this off now though and move on to the next test. Let's keep moving, shall we? Now I've just preheated this and I'm not even worrying about the timer anymore. I just set it all the way to max and just leave it every time because the timer seems kind of useless. But let's try a bagel now. They say it's a wide toasting slot. Let's try it out here. I'm gonna put a bagel in here. I'm gonna put it on four again because it seemed like the English muffin on three didn't do so well all on the toast. It was almost burnt, so who knows? I'm gonna put the bagel on four, 
Start it there, hit the bagel button. Now while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna load up the other side with some sausage and bacon and see how that does. Now obviously for us, a bacon is gonna be too big. It's, it's one slice is longer than the entire, entire tray there. So I cut one slice of bacon in half. Oh, we have a nice sizzle, that's good. And I've got some sausage here. I think I can fit these right along the side here. Think I, can I fit three? I think I can fit three in there. All right, we're ready to go. All right, bacon is sizzling, sausage is in there, and the bagel is still going too. So we got a lot going on. Hopefully it all turns out well. Okay, I'm gonna cover this up just in case it starts splattering. Now all I have to do is wait. All right, let's take a look at the bagel on four. Uh, definitely not even. <laughs> this side is much browner than that side, but I mean, it's acceptable. Except maybe for purists, I guess toast doesn't really have to be perfect, right? But let's keep watching these and see how they're doing here. Bailey, I know you want some of that. I know you want some. Let's take a peek here. Oh, we're making progress. I'm just kind of curious here. Let's see what we get. All right, after the first flip, uh, looking pretty good. Definitely acceptable, I think. All right, let's take a quick look here. Oh, I would say it's probably done. Let's, uh, let's get these out of here. And here is what we've got. What do you guys think? Right, we, are, we are done there. All right, let's take a taste of these. First up, some bacon. Well done. Now some sausage. Perfectly cooked. Now, there's not a lot of room in there, but as far as bacon and sausage goes, it worked pretty well. There's not much left to try out in here, but I haven't tried the steaming feature for veggies, and I haven't tried the frozen feature on the toaster side, so let's try both of those. First up, I got a couple of frozen Eggos. They're frozen. Toss them in here. I'm gonna put this on four. Hit the button and hit the defrost. While that's going, let's try steaming some vegetables. Now the instructions, I didn't really see any instructions on steaming vegetables, so I'm gonna use the same instructions for hard boiled eggs. I filled up the, uh, the measuring cup here. Put the steaming basket on top. Right, we have a goodly amount of broccoli in there. All right, let's put the uh, lid on here. Set the useless timer all the way up. And see how it happens there. And we got our waffles going, so we are good to go. All right, here's how the frozen waffles look with a setting of four, not bad. That's side one, side two, side one, side two. I think it came out pretty good, actually. I think four is about right for these. Let's see how they turned out. It's not perfect. I'm not sure how long the broccoli's gonna take, but we'll find out soon enough. All right, it's been over 10 minutes. Let's take a look. Now, one thing I noticed is this, this gets hot. I actually need a uh, pot holder for this here. Oh, they look nicely steamed. Oh, it looks nice. It looks really nice. Bailey, what do you think? I think Bailey wants some. All right, so it does steam vegetables and it steamed a decent amount too. Steamed broccoli down the hatch. That came out perfect. I've got one more thing I want to try before I wrap this thing up. Now they say you can use this egg ring for pancakes, but that's too small for me. I want a big pancake. I'm going to go right in the griddle itself. It's been preheated. I put a little bit of oil in the bottom. I've got some pancake mix. Let's try it out. That's going to be an interesting shaped pancake, but uh, we shall see about that. So I'm just going to stand here and watch this and I'll let you know if anything changes. All right, I think we're about ready to flip this kind of weird shaped pancake. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, not bad. Well, one thing this proves is that the surface is pretty even. There aren't any spots that are significantly darker or lighter, so I think the evenness is pretty good. All right, I think we're probably about done here. Let's, let's see how this looks. Side number one, side number two, I think it uh, came out pretty nice. So in the end, I'm probably a bit on the fence about this, as I am with all the breakfast stations I've tried. Now, as far as the toaster side of it goes, I think it's serviceable. If you're looking for the highest end toaster, this ain't it. If you don't care if your toast is a little bit uneven, it'll certainly fit the bill. Now the griddle side, I think it did a pretty good job on everything, including doing six hard boiled eggs at once that were easy to peel. So I'm pretty happy about that. To me, the biggest issue with this is the timer, which in the best case scenario is confusing. and the worst case, it's useless. It's weird because you set the timer, but it doesn't really count down. So you don't even really know where you're at in the timing process. I don't think they should have really done that. It could have been better implemented. But in the end, I would say those who buy this and have realistic expectations probably won't be disappointed. But that's all I've got. If you've tried this or something like it, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.